Hi all, this is my classic round 5 game against I am Simon Ansel. Uh, so I played knight f3 and he played the move I, I'm not doing very well against. Well, the, when black aims for a Slav setup or we'll transposition into the Slav defence. This is extremely popular at the moment, the Slav, even you know, at, the, at the top levels especially, as a way of you know nearly easily equalising and giving white very serious difficulty to try for a win. The only problem is if, if I suppose if the black player wants to win, maybe some of the lines restrict black's winning chances a little bit. So anyway, I played d4 after knight f6, knight c3, and he took the pawn. And I think under the influence of um, a book I'd, I'd, I'd recently been reading by Stuart Rubin, um, where a4 is considered the safest, I played a4. But uh, sometimes in the past I've just gambited this c-pawn. And I wonder about going back to that system, either playing e4, which apparently is called the Geller Gambit, which maybe I should try and do a video on, or or g3, which is more a bit bit deeper. You know, if you, if you just have positional pressure later on this diagonal. So either Gambit systems just to keep the fun of the game alive. Simon's been playing the Slav apparently for years and years and years, and you know it's one of his best results. You know, in terms of opening systems he gets his best results from this and I can see why because in this game I really didn't get much as we'll see so bishop f5 so the bishop's going to be outside of black's pawn chain now so you know black has no problems with either bishops and this one is actually kind of nasty on this diagonal um, so this is fairly you know minimal advantage of anything and I played knight e5 here because I remember um, a game of Jonathan Parker, but it was only a drawn game. It wasn't anything special. Um, and that's, that's the thing. If you if you can have a reference game, you know, at least have quite a few which are winning, for you know, which have good clear plans. But the idea of this is just you know, to go here and attack this bishop. And I thought a little small victory, like the bishop went back. But still, I haven't really got much here. Maybe the move f3 is the most ambitious. But black has two pawn breaks, which need to be calculated all the time, c5 and e5. In this particular position, so say I did play f3, then c5, something like this could be the continuation, and that's fine for white, that's good for white. But I think the more critical one is, is actually e5 here. So say takes uh, like this, and I think white will be... Um, will be okay here after, in, in this continuation well especially after bishop takes f7 but th there was something else I was looking at earlier so knight takes e5 well I think white can according to Rubka has a tiny edge still here so so maybe you know this this idea of f3 has some merit in this position the, the other po possibility I mean it would justify the knight c3 con knight d3 concept because it did unblock the f pawn so say c5 e4 um, now say bishop g6 instead so here there could be d5 and again white would stand better if, if white has a bishop on d5 and this bishop's cut off now with this pawn on e4 this is fine for white as well but anyway in the game I played a5 which I'm not sure is that good because this actually allows black to play b5 uh, and then play b5 again as we're going to see so b5 and the queen is you know actually bearing down some pressure here and also d8 now is vacated for the rook so my queen's going to get attacked indirectly very soon so e5 and he's isolating my queen's pawn so I haven't really justified you know the knight moving around I've lost quite a bit of time and look at black's bishops they're beautiful really they're very you know this is a very comfortable structure working with the pieces pieces are very good for black all, all round um, so rook d8 and my queen's you know having difficulty now having a square so I go to b3 plays b5 and now I get a misplaced knight as well um, but black according to Rupert is already you know almost half a pawn up here positioning so, so I did knight d1 
I mean, Queen A7 Black's got the A5, could play Rook A8. Look at these pieces that the jumble, they're a mess. Look at Black's pieces. Quality wise, Black's already, you know, strategically won based on piece position. So I make it, you know, this is as bad as anything like A4. So I get the isolated Queen's pawn. And now I lose my dark squared bishop. And that really spells a disaster. Uh, on the diagonal and, and basically long term pressure after c5 so black's um, getting rid of you know this structural problem the c6 pawn so dissolving that and ending up you know dynamically with the two bishops bearing down on e3 and basically this is very very downhill now very passive position and this lovely rook lift to d6 to go to f6 so I'm under severe pressure and to top things off, Simon now pushes his h pawn forward, so I'm going to get torn to shreds as well. My king, it's it's not one of my best games this year with white, <laughs> and I, I, it's kind of emphasised to me I need to be a bit clearer about the system I'm going to play against the Slav. So if I'm going to play this knight e5 again, I think it has to be with the f3 concept. So those were critical variations that I had showed you earlier with f3. If you want to try this. Knight e5 to d3. I know that this game looks like a disaster, but um, that doesn't mean that I, the, you know the, the, the discussion is over about that concept because it's difficult for White to get an advantage against the Slav anyway. So anyway, he's he's now crushing my king's position with h3. So knight g3, and now the rook comes to the seventh rank with rook d6, gaining a tempo on that bishop. I was in time trouble anyway here, but the position has been blown apart by force. So rook d2. I take the pawn, but now just rook takes b2, and it's I resign here because you know bishop takes e3 is coming. The queen's the queen can't even protect e3 anymore. So look at these bishops; they, they were vicious all game, and they're vicious here. The rooks, you know, now fantastic, and the queen is bearing down on on e3 as well. So it was a fantastic game from Black. Um, you know, all credit to you know my I I am opponent and. Um, and this Slav, you know, you really, I think I need a system <laughs> which, well, a, a better follow-up uh, if I'm going to play the knight e5 here. Because bishop b4 is quite a common um, move, but there were a few mistakes after. So f3 here is, is critical, I think, if I'm going to try this in blitz, blitz games, <laughs> for example, which I would like to. Um, so, again, you know, c5 and e5, they're both not bad, so c5... Just to recap, e4, and I think white's going to be okay. Um, whatever happens because of d5. And e5, if e5 instead, then uh, we're saying knight takes e5. Um, now, if black just castled, then e4. And according to Ribka, it's on depth 9, it's, it's plus 0 0.23, so there's something. If we can play bishop e3 next, I think, yeah, bishop e3, that's good. Just supporting that d4. And this, this will be the small advantage, which, which is nice to have. Um, and it's important to have, especially, you know, when you're playing against, you know, a stronger uh, opponent. Um, so, yeah, a uh, quick recap on the game. So, structurally, um, you know, black was doing very well. The, the, the coordination between the black bishops in particular and the structure is very nice. The choice of thematic breaks with c5 and e5 is very nice. Gaining, gaining the dark square bishop is very nice. Dissolving the weakness is very nice. And bearing down generally on, on the white position is very good. And the final king attack, you know, just, just incre increases the advantage to, to crushing levels now, with the rook coming to the seventh rank. A very, very nice game for my opponent. And um, it, it shows that uh, you uh, have to be very careful in particular, you know, to, to try and get an advantage out of the opening. And not just go downhill against a stronger opponent. Please leave any comment, comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.